Hello, my name is Ennis Afton. I'm a research scientist at Johns Hopkins University, working with a group of great people on the ANVIL project. Today, we're going to take a look at how we architect a galaxy for working on protected data sets. So what's it like working with protected data? Unlike the open data counterpart that's easy to download off of a variety of URLs, with protected data sets, as a researcher, you first have to make an application to the Data Access Committee to grant you access to the given data set. Assuming your application is adequate and you're granted an approval for accessing the data, you are allowed to download and, um, download and analyze the data. However, there are some gotchas. Here, your institution, the company that employs you, is ultimately responsible for maintaining the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the data that the uh, DAC committee granted you access to. This comes with some ties as to what kind of environment the data is allowed to reside in. However, uh, it's an afterthought is not a good place to start here. You have to design the security into the chosen environment before you start downloading the data because the integrity of the data has to be maintained throughout its life cycle. So what does this look like? How do we design the security, the necessary security into an environment? Well, depending on where you live in the world, there are different organizations that will publish best practices on what it means uh, for data to be considered in a secure environment. In the United States, this is NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, who publishes a document, one of which is 800, uh, NIST 853, um, that's a book of uh, rules, guidelines, and checks that ensure that after you've implemented those, uh, your environment adheres to the set of uh, best practices. Once you have this set of controls implemented in an institution, you can go and have it uh, uh, compliance verified, which carries another term such as FISMA and, and FedRAMP or HIPAA for dealing with human data. But overall, the basic uh, principle is that these are complex, time-consuming uh, efforts that require a lot of uh, money as well. And in turn are inaccessible to individual researchers in most labs. So what are you as a researcher, as an individual researcher, to do? Well, this is where Anvil comes in. Unlike uh, traditional environments that were intended where people downloaded data onto their local system, analyzed them locally, uh, Anvil bundles the compute infrastructure, the data, and the applications into one place. Hence, as a user, you're able to uh, get the data, get the necessary tools, and, and the infrastructure to operate on the data. Better yet, all this is surrounded in a compliance environment, in this case, FedRAMP. And so anybody in the world can come and use Anvil uh, and get access to these tools, Galaxy being one of them. But what did it take to actually get Galaxy into this uh, environment and make it compliance uh, adequate, adequately compliant? So if we dissect uh, what is Galaxy, it's, it's for years now, it, accessibility, reproducibility, and sharing have stood as the three pillars uh, defining majority of, sort of Galaxy. So how do we replicate these in a compliance-based environment that imposes some stringent uh, rules as to how an application and how data can be shared and, and, um, and, and run? So for replicating accessibility, um, we maintain the, the browser-based access, so you go to the Terra portal for, for Anvil, so uh, anvil.terra.bio, you select Galaxy, and you will be, in a few minutes, given access to a Galaxy instance. What has happened in the back, a dedicated instance of Galaxy was launched for you and you only. You're not able to share this instance to any, with any other users. So in this case, we have to manage potentially hundreds of Galaxy instances and, uh, and, and deliver them in a robust fashion to the users. So how do we actually implement this? Well, we adopted Kubernetes and Helm as technologies of choice that allow us to create to have this robust deployment uh, mechanism and subsequent uh, management of the application. For replicating reproducibility, you would think history is enough. But what if the, the disks that Galaxy runs on are transient? So here we have to architect Galaxy to first allow it to be in, to ingest data from um, Anvil itself. Anvil houses over three petabytes of interesting data sets. And so in Galaxy, you can now go browse these data sets from within the Galaxy interface, select the ones you would like to work on, and have them saved on persistent disks uh, within your 
own environment. So you can come back at a later time, recreate the same galaxy environment, and hence uh, gain the benefits of reproducibility. There's a full-length talk on this topic uh, listed down at the bottom of the slide, so please check it out as well for more details on this feature. And lastly, how do we rep replicate sharing? Because again, these are individual instances that, uh, that, that cannot have multiple users um, uh, simultaneously using them. Uh, so we've enabled exporting of data to Anvil workspaces. The workspace has the capacity to then be shared with different users, hence who can then import data into their own Galaxy instances. Similarly, we've allowed exporting of methods or workflows into DocStore as a repository of methods uh, that also implements sharing capabilities and, uh, and users can then import those histories in their own uh, environments. So if you want to try this, come by poster and uh, or go by anvilproject.org.